All right, we're back from break. Small blind, 16,000, big blind, 30,000. Small big blind, Amy, 30,000. There you go. Oh. All right, good first step. Go ahead and hold. And we welcome you back from break. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. It is season number 18 of the WPT's Rolling Thunder Final Table in Sacramento, California. Dave Fair alongside Tyler Patterson and still six-handed. Eric here in the cutoff won himself a nice big pot right before the break and coming back going to find himself with a couple of eights. We're up to uh, 15K and 30K now are the blinds. Shank Carla Short Stack's going to fold. Over to Kevin here in the big blind. A six. Okay. Call there, already 175,000 in the center. To a flop we go, and there's a six in the window. So Kevin gonna pick up a pair of sixes, but Eric's still in control with his eights. Check from Kevin. Two biggest stacks in the tournament, right? Left, I think. Yeah, Robert's hanging around in that range, but yeah, these uh, these guys, most chips on the table, and Deuce rolls off. Kevin quickly checks. Apes got to seem like the best hand here. Can you go for a little bit of value with it? Pop it up for 75,000. Now a quarter million chips in the center. At the same time, if this six got to look pretty good for Kevin, too. I assume he's going to at least call. There's call. the call. River rolls off a four. Yeah. Check from Kevin. Pretty good looking board for pocket eights. <laughs> it is, yeah, but that four does actually hit a lot of the things that would have called there on the turn, would have made some two pairs and uh, in a straight with anything that had a three in it. Eric going to put 200,000 new chips into the center. It's a decent sized value bet, and it's really only targeting a few hands. It's a single pair of fours, fives, and sixes. So a good read from Eric, knowing that his opponent has exactly that. It's a tough spot for Kevin. I wouldn't see him getting away very often. I'll use one of his time extension chips. There's not very many worse hands that would value bet, though. Once again, we're just in a call a bluff situation. Does that 200,000 amount seem bluffy to you? Not really. It's very fitting. The, the, the pot was 300,000, 325. He bets 200. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a merged sizing, so it's going to be both, meaning it's both bluffs and value bets. And Kevin kind of reluctantly makes the call and gets the bad news. Doesn't love it, but uh, decides to call. He is, it's not a one-to-one -one situation. You are getting 525 to 200. That ends up being a pretty big pot. I mean, just to, you know, those last couple of hands have really swung the direction of Eric. Uh, he's trying to make some history today. If he can win this tournament and this final table, he'll be the uh, first player in WPT history to win the same tournament back-to-back -back in consecutive years. And with that victory there, Eric, the chip leader, at 2.9 million, Kevin at 2.6, and down from there. You see $279,000 up top, and sixth place, I mean, I say only pays $45,000. That's still a nice <laughs> chunk, but nice. that's a big swing between first and sixth. So you see why these guys are taking their time and being methodical and even burning those time ext extension chips when necessary. Even sixth to fifth, where, I mean, the next person out, uh, when one person busts, the next guy gets at least 15000 more. So. Yeah, it goes from forty-five to up to sixty-one, and then eighty-five from there. 
you make the uh, the top three, you're getting six figures. And 279,000 all the way up top. Robert on the button, out of there with his seven deuce. Kevin here in the small blind. King nine of clubs. It's a nice looking hand to have in the small blind. Could go with the limp, could go with the raise. Both are just fine. A lot of oh. players these days just limp their entire, any hand they're going to play from the small blind, they always limp. They might decide to re-raise later, but they don't have any raises in their range. Call and check. Here we go to the flop. Jake with 8-5 offsuit. We got a couple of aces and a six. King nine certainly feels like the best hand here. I think it probably usually plays better as a trap, but he's going to go ahead and bet. He might get some value out of queen high or uh, jack high or Jake getting frisky. Hard to find a lot of value out of an 8-5 offsuit. And yep. so Jake quickly gets out of there, and Kevin going to scoop up a small pot. So now with the uh, the blinds going up to uh, to where they are, what kind of new pressure do you think there is for some of the shorter stacks at this table? A little bit of extra pressure on uh, shank card. They're, the rest of them are not that shallow. Even the, the next shortest guys have 24, 28 big blinds. So uh, they're not in just a shove mode. And shank card is not short enough to where they have to wait each other out either. I think everyone's still just kind of playing poker. Six players remain here at Thunder Valley. Eric folds, Shankar folds, Robert out of the way. Over to Kevin on the button with his Jack-10 offsuit. He'll make the call. Jake in the small blind, King-9. Kevin just goes with the button limp so that he gets to see the flop more often. Doesn't have to face a three bet and fold. Tony, though, here in the big blind, he's got ace four. He'll just check to a flop we go, three-handed. There's an ace, a six, and a seven, all clubs. So Jake drawing at the nut flush. Tony hits his ace. Only Kevin with his jack ten doesn't have a lot going right now. And they both quickly check to Kevin. He'll check as well. Turn rolls off a three of diamonds. Kevin might have bluffed there if it was heads up, but with a three-handed pot, it's just four cards to try to get the fold, and so many things they can hit. Jake with the check, and Tony with his pair of aces going to make it a little more expensive to play. 80,000 to go now, 200,000 is in the center. And again, Jake looking for another club here for that nut flush. Could also decide to turn it into a bluff, but he's going to go ahead and call with it. And it's a four of diamonds. It doesn't get there. Tony's ace is going to hold. Check from Jake. Tony's hand didn't prove there, so he got a second pair with that river. Tony's thinking about getting going for a value bet here. Bet one twenty five thousand. Buck and a quarter. Four oh five in the center now. And you see with the stacks that these guys have behind, there's a significant pot. Absolutely is. Jake's considering bluffing all in here. Against Tony, you don't want to get looked up light. There's no reason Tony doesn't have a five. Oh. He does go for it. Does. Oh, he jams. Oh, man, this is Boy, really ugly for strong. Tony, too, because you've got two pair, but there's so many ways to be beat here. Yeah, and it's for it's for almost it's Tony's fun. whole tournament life. Tony's, I don't know, he's probably the stickiest of the table. This has got to be a pretty scary spot for Jake. You can see him breathing pretty hard. <laughs> Tony wants to call so bad.
when you have the king of clubs, it's just one of the few flushes your opponent can't have, and you know they can't have the nuts. And you're right, you can see that adrenaline flowing right now for, for Jake. He's, he's breathing pretty heavy. Tony's trying to decide if Jake would do this with a five or if he would just call. If he doesn't think Jake would do this with a five, I think Tony ends up making the call because he just there's just not enough cards. He's picking up the chicken wings, trying to get <laughs> some table talk going. <laughs> Credit to Jake for making this play. He really <laughs> wants to get this <laughs> title, finally get one of these. Seven final tables, looking for that first WPT title, and Tony going to burn another time extension. Understandably so. I mean, this is just such a huge spot. Can't be wrong here. And Tony already made one incorrect hero call. That might be in the back of his head. I don't know if he wants to do it again, especially for almost all of his chips. I mean, basically all of his chips. Hear that 10-second ding yep. again. Burn through this whole stack of time extension chips on the action clock yeah he's only got one left now now it's we'll <laughs> it's see really how that affects things it's going really forward. decision time there's so much pressure right now I'd be scared to make this play if I was Jake but Tony's the stickiest at the table I think there it goes again another ding he said it's decision time Oh, oh my goodness! Oh, and you see Woo. the relief, <laughs> yeah, the actual at exhale that. there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> oh, he shows him! Oh my oh, god! Brutal! <laughs> Tony's like, oh my god! <laughs> oh, Tony, so mad at himself. Look at him! Oh man! And just. Oh, brutal for Jake to show him that, too. <laughs> like you said, Tony, oh, stickiest man. at the table, Great has play. such a hard time folding already, Great. and then just right. shows him the all-in bluff. I mean, Tony had him crushed throughout that entire hand with the absence of that final club that he needed. Oh, man, that is brutal. And you know Tony has got to be steaming right now. <laughs> Shane Carr's like, hey, man, uh, he's why don't you not make liking that, that? Why don't you make that call? Help me out a little <laughs> yeah. bit here. <laughs> you would have loved that. Yeah. <laughs> I almost flipped over my cards twice because I thought you were single chip calling. Call, yeah. That's another well, interesting dynamic. A lot of times people just fire in a chip to signify that they've called. Yeah. Just one chip. And uh, with the time oh. extension chips, you have to remember that. That's that not what's not going on. It's not a call. That is yeah. a time extension, yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Tony's just got to be just sick. <laughs> and now Tony with just under 20 big blinds. And the small blind is going to feel like a steam raise when he shoves here, but he's probably just going to shove. Oh, oh he calls. Uh, it just the makes king the call. Ten. Okay. Yeah, oh, that wouldn't have worked. Eric either. in the big blind here. Ace four diamonds. Yeah, he's just going to go. On him. Put the pressure back on. Yeah, it just assumes that uh, after that spot, he's not going to run into a trap there from Tony. If Tony has anything, he's just going to raise it. That was I so close. You, you did this. Like you're, you were shielded and you did this. And I'm like, that's like the single chip call. <laughs> and, uh, I almost flipped over my hand. You and I have been here at Thunder Valley for some uh, high drama situations on the stream. Yeah, that's uh, 
the last stream that we did, that was <laughs> one of the craziest calls we've ever seen. Well, the fold, the fold, the, rather, the fold yeah. from Ian Steinman, yep. yeah. <laughs> Against uh, Joe McKeon. That was pretty wow, I knew One of the sickest one. folds that I've ever seen. Yeah, the sickest I've ever seen. Just crazy. It's great. That is, though. That was a great bluff by Jake. That's not easy to do. Jake tried to give uh, Tony a little little kiss on the cheek there, and Tony didn't <laughs> seem too receptive to it. <laughs> In the hijack, Kevin, ace eight. Going to go up to 60,000. Jake in the cutoff, ace queen. Don't make the call. Tony's out of there with his ace deuce. So... We know where three of the aces in the deck are at this point. One's in the muck. Oh. So Eric's going to pass. Shankar, queen, three of hearts in the big blind. This uh, ace-queen flat, for one thing, is to try to trap Shankar into shoving a worse hand. Uh, and also to keep some worse aces in like it is doing here with Kevin. It does play well as a three-bet also. You can just scoop up the pot a decent amount of time. To the flop we go, there's a king, there's a jack, there's a four, there's two hearts out there, so interesting flop for Shankar now all of a sudden. He's got four to the flush. Yeah, this is an interesting situation. See if Jake bets or just checks his, uh, his showdown value with ace-queen high. Decides to bet, and I'm pretty sure Shankar's gonna shove here. Shankar with 405,000 behind. Going to give it a quick count. Jake could be bluffing with all sorts of things he can fold here. Being in position, last act. Already nearly 300,000 in the middle, only 400,000 back. And call. he'll just make the call. Shankar so he wants decides to peel one. He decides Jake has too many hands, he's actually going to call. So just goes for the call instead. Shankar looking for another heart, and there it is. Hits his flush. Quickly checks. Let's see if he's able to get some value out of Jake here. Jake could try to make a four, or I guess it would just only be a four to fold. Check, check. And the river rolls off a three. Shankar realizes he probably doesn't have any bluffs in his range, so shoving he's not going to get called very often, but I don't think Jake's going to bluff very often either, so he's going to go ahead and bet it all in, hope that Jake has two pair or maybe just calls the king. <laughs> Total pot size of 700,000, so Shankar manages to, uh, to stay alive there. Could have found himself in some trouble, but instead scooping himself a pot, 700,000 chips right back in it, 23 big blinds, so getting out of that... Uh, that danger range, or at least right there on the edge of it still. Thanks for hanging out with us, Dave Farah and Tyler Patterson, hanging out here in Sacramento. Having ourselves a great time so far at this <laughs> final table of Rolling Thunder. It's the 18th season of the World Poker Tour, and it's a good one, man. This is a great poker room, great mm -hmm. event so far, and much like you predicted before this event got underway, you know, these guys are going to grind this one out. There's a lot of money at the top, almost $300,000, so... These guys taking their time, being very methodical. Have had a couple of close calls for a few of these guys, but uh, so far, slow and steady. Yeah, and a couple uh, a couple cool storylines here. Jake looking for his first WPT win, even though it's his seventh WPT final table. Uh, Eric going for back-to-back. -back. He won this event last year, and he was the reigning WPT player of the year. Uh, Jake, I think, was second or really close to it in player of the year last year, so it's a stacked final table. Tony Tran's a WPT champion. So the Hublot Player of the Year race is underway right now. Brian Altman is currently leading. Season number 18, uh, Brian won himself the WPT Lucky Hearts Poker Open at the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. Placed third at WPT Maryland and placed 10th at the WPT Legends of Poker at the Bike in Los Angeles. Winner of this event is going to earn 1,000 points, and grand prize is the $15,000 WPT Passport. 
can be used in any Season 19 WPT event, including the WPT 500 or the WPT Main Tour, the special events. Complimentary accommodation in majority of WPT Main Tour events, ground transportation, food and beverage credit, the special WPT Player of the Year trophy, the Hublot Watch, valued at approximately $15,000, an award presentation at the Season 18 finale. Presented by Baccarat Crystal at the HyperX Esports Arena in Las Vegas at that Tournament of Champions. So a lot on the line for the Player of the Year, and Eric looking to improve his standings. Here we go all the way to the river on this one, and Tony going to make himself three jacks with that river card rolling out. Pot has stayed pretty contained. That ace cooled the action on the flop and the turn. And unfortunately for Tony, uh, Robert doesn't have much to pay him here. Tony with his trips going to fire at 100,000. Robert will pass. Tony will take down another pot. 275,000 in total going his direction. You think Tony's still steaming a little bit? Oh, yeah, that's going to be a hard one to let go. Uh, unless he finishes first place in this tournament, even if he goes on for the next five hours and gets second place, I think he'll still be kicking himself about it. <laughs> Jake is realizing that since the he had aces up and still folded, that makes his bluff even better. If Tony's going to fold that big a hand. Jake under the gun, first act. An ace <laughs> and a deuce, two hearts. The ace is 65. Grabbing some chips, up to 65,000 we go. Tony in the hijack, king four off. Not even considering what to do with the king four off yet. Still talking about that hand. Oh. <laughs> oh. Over to Kevin, the big blind, 65,000 is what it's been raised to. Obviously. Call. He'll make the call, and 175,000 in the center. Heads up to the flop. King five, an ugly hand, but uh, getting a great price. There is a jack of nine and a six. Ace, still good for Jake. There is a deuce, so Jake going to get a little more. Both boards looking kind of ugly for each of them. Mm -hmm. Sixty-five. 65 is the bet from Jake. I'm just happy to end the pot now that he has a pair of deuces. And that'll do it. Action clock is brought to us by Protection Poker. 30 seconds for each of the time extension chips. And interestingly, Tony, who's the shortest of the stacks, just 22 big blinds, 655,000, also the shortest of the stacks when it comes to those time extension chips. So Just one we'll left. Yeah, we'll see if that plays a factor, but certainly uh, certainly could. There's a long way to go on this final table. So if, uh, if Tony is able to make a, uh, a deep run here on this final table, it will be interesting to see how the uh, – that will speed up the action for him and make him have to make some uh, some quick decisions. Yeah, that's be also going to be some added insult there to that to that fold because <laughs> right. he burned all the time extension yeah. chips on that hand too. If you're not willing to call that damn thing anywhere, <laughs> I did call it. You put the pressure on. You're disrespectful right now. Oh boy. Yeah, you're really just the disrespectful one. <laughs> oh oh boy. Tony, Tony talk a little bit of trash. Don't limp into my dick, bro. <laughs> Still so mad. Oh, well, they're actually talking about a different hand. They're talking about uh, the hand when Tony raised with three six off. Yeah, and, uh, I think they may be connected here. The trash talk. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. 
So Eric with a six of diamonds going to raise it up to 65,000. How about this? Couple ladies for Robert on the button. Queen, queen. And he's going to three bet it looks like. Yep. 225,000 to go now. <laughs> Back over to Eric. I haven't really seen these guys clash much oh. or many uh, folds to three bets yet, but that one's so going to win. Yeah, that one works for Robert. Those lifesavers. You have lifesavers. Robert's been uh, relatively stress-free on this final table. He hasn't had any tough decisions. Just kind of slowly yeah, that's what I was at. chipping up. Oh, you have to go get. You don't need to go. And style points for the scarf as oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. have the confidence to pull that off, man. I don't, I don't <laughs> think I could do it. The uh, our eighth place finisher uh, Charles Kaysen was uh, giving him a hard time about the scar oh scarf really? yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> Charles is. He's uh, like quiet down, bubble <laughs> <laughs> He, uh, yeah, he likes the speech play and the he likes to get into people's heads and really talk a lot of trash. He's a fun player to have at the table. He and Robert went at it a little bit. Robert mostly just kind of smiled and took it. <laughs> Gave him a couple needles here and there. Oh. Oh. Robert, the cutoff, another nice starting hand here, ace-10. Looks like we'll go up again. Yep, 65,000. Kevin and Jake quickly out of there. Over to Tony. In the big blind now, 10-7 offsuit. He'll pass. He might defend that if he had more chips, but uh, going to let it go now. Here's some cheers from the crowd for Robert. I mean, cheers may be over exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a subdued crowd yeah. today so far. Yeah. <laughs> when Tony wins a pot, Frank the Tank shouts up a little bit with the uh, the chicken legs, mm -hmm. chicken wings. <laughs> Do you prefer the uh, the wings or the drums? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I took a took a bet to be vegan for a year, so I don't prefer oh, either so one of them. Either. <laughs> right Do you now. remember what it was like to eat chicken wings before <laughs> that? Yeah, yeah, okay. I guess I do. Yeah, the, I am the flat I'm, ones. I'm strictly. Oh, you like the flats? Yeah, huh? See, I'm flats. strictly a drum guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and my wife is the uh, is the flat, so that's I think pretty much 90 percent of why our good relationship combo. works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for when there's an off ratio, you know, if you get like eight drums in the order, it's a disaster. Right. My girlfriend and I are now deciding over which flavors of boneless, fake chicken, fake meat. Have you had the ones, <laughs> the uh, the garden ones from, yeah, uh, from yeah, the yard house? Those are actually yeah. pretty good. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> How far are you in? Is it just is it this year the vegan challenge? Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're about seven months in, so we have about oh. fi five more to go. Okay, so you're yeah. you're you're past the halfway mark. How'd how have you found it? Has it been difficult? Uh, not really, no. It's uh, it's kind of annoying at restaurants to have to order special sometimes. And yeah. and well, most I don't places, like they, being they, that guy. they tend to cater to that. They now, do right? now, yeah. most places. In most big cities, Vegas is great, L.A. is great. Um, oh. They have an awesome steakhouse here, but uh, they look at you like you're an alien if you ask for a vegan menu. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually not true. They've actually taken care of us really well here at the steakhouse, too. <laughs> to be fair, it's a very nice steakhouse here. It is. It's great. I feel bad. Not you walk into a Longhorn steak. Steakhouse in Alabama, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing here, boy? <laughs> <laughs> that might be the case. <laughs> Pull up in a Prius and ask for a vegan menu at a place like that. They're like, oh, boy, this is going to be a challenge. But, yeah, here at uh, here at Thunder Valley, man, it's a great steakhouse. And have a little tuna appetizer last night along with a nice uh, filet perfectly cooked it's great yeah this is awesome good wine list there good too. wine list good scotch list yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah and ben likes to throw a good wine party in there too for the wpt champions dinner we had uh, in there was top notch i mean we had three tables full of champions all of them being really nice to us and giving us good wine and food 
Nothing wrong with that. So Robert raising it up here to 65,000 with his ace five of hearts. Going to win that one. For my friends at home, I think uh, two hours means the over came in on uh, how long it took to mention that I, was vegan? that I was vegan. <laughs> 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 oh, that's hilarious. Is that a new record for you? Yeah, it might it be. Might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's hard to get through. Uh, I mean, we sat here for you know nearly an hour before it went. You didn't even bring it up. Yeah, I've I asked been you like uh, how things are going, like where you're living now, what's <laughs> going on with your life. You didn't have a <laughs> single point drop that you're vegan. That's yeah, it's just uh, if now if that I'm seven it, months if in. In an hour from now, you tell me that you love CrossFit too. On my mind is just going to be blown. Oh yeah, <laughs> I do have another secret one in there that I oh talk boy. about constantly. We'll get to it. Okay, all right. <laughs> Still got plenty of play to go here. <laughs> Six left at this final table. <laughs> Shankar looking down at King Ford Diamonds. In the small blind, 610,000 back, and he's going to make the call, it looks call. like. Yep. Over to Robert. He's been getting some nice starting hands here. So queen 10 of diamonds this time. So it's a great hand. He doesn't want to raise here because he doesn't want Shankar to shove and then uh, not get to play the queen 10 or have to call it off with the king queen 10. Instead, he'd rather just play the pot. So he gets to play it in position with the queen 10 of diamonds. Yeah, and nice. the, uh, the, the 10 hits there. So middle pair as well as a backdoor flush possibility. Of course, he doesn't really want that, which he'll find out if it gets there. But Shankar going to 30,000, and I imagine Robert's going to hang out here. Just makes the call. High stakes here for Shankar. And an eight rolls off. Let's see, things not looking great for Shankar. Going to need to catch a king here on the river in order to, uh, to win this one. He's going to check, so he slows down. Only 565,000 back. Robert firmly in control here. He's going to make another pass at this. So. Second pair with the uh, the queen kicker. 75,000 is the bet, and it takes down the pot for him. It's your big line, guys. Another stress-free pot. I'd like to see Robert have to make a tough decision at some point. <laughs> Just use the scarf to take the sweat <laughs> beads off his forehead. I think Tony lost a button on the shirt after that. <laughs> Tony still looks angry to me. I don't know if that's just my perception because I know that he's probably still steaming, but he just. Just looks displeased still. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I can't, oh, well help. can't blame him for, for being displeased. It's a tough spot to be in. 655,000 behind. A couple of kings for him. So the paired paint, and Tony is going to jump it out to 65,000. Eric with ace jack suited. This could be interesting. And that's a big hand. He's um, could three bet. If he does, he's gonna have to go with it for, with Tony's stack. Oh. So I think he, that's why he yeah, decides to just call. Oh man! So this could be fireworks <laughs> all the way around. Cause Shankar can come over the top now pretty easily, I would imagine. I'm pretty sure Shankar is going to put it in. A couple of sevens. It's gonna be bad news for him if he does potentially. Let's see what he decides. He's on the button here. All, all in. in. There it is. The move. And oh, oh my God. <laughs> Ace queen. So that's <laughs> actually quite bad news for, for Eric because now one of the aces and for Robert, obviously, depending on what he decides to do. But Robert's just going to step out of the way, understandably so. We haven't even seen Kevin's hand yet. <laughs> this is an awkward spot for Robert. And so he finally got that tough decision, that stress that I was talking about. Yeah. He just lets it go in two yeah. seconds like it was no big deal. No big deal. What a great <laughs> fold from Robert. And there goes Tony over the top. And Eric's, you saw him just go, <laughs> what? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. I got ace, jack of hearts. Like, how does everyone have a made hand? Well, the thing is, with both of them in for about 600, you can see Eric's percentage there is 29%. If they showed him their hands, he would probably be right, uh, just about right to call, even though he's that far behind. He's getting a decent 
getting such a good price, I think he's probably going to have to call here. 655. Yeah. Hey, good lay down. Almost 1.3 million in the middle, and Eric says, nope, not today. So here we go, kings versus sevens. Two smaller stacks all in against each other. Heads Tony's, up to a flop, yeah. Tony's king's hold here. He might uh, be able to re breathe a sigh of relief from Reboot that last a bit, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, let's see. Here we go. The flop is a nine, a three, and a four. So good news for Tony. You see, ninety percent to ten percent. Shankar drawn for one of those sevens. To the turn, it's a queen, no help. Now it's just two outs for Shankar. Here comes the river. And it is a nine and Tony, 1.4 million going his direction. And Shankar is going to be the first to make the walk. Good play by him, didn't have a lot of opportunities and he's gonna be Cashing in sixth place for $45,390. And like you said, Tony getting an opportunity to uh, to reset now. Plenty of chips to play with. And the next person to go is going to get almost 62000 So Tony, who's actually been mixing it up a bit and had a couple of at-risk moments, I'm sure feeling pretty good about this pay jump of over $15,000 on